Hello, everyone. I wanted to show you another problem that um, represents how to define a function in terms of a definite integral. So this is a continuation of the last lesson. Um, all right, so let's take a look. This is 2019 AB1. We're given that fish enter a lake at a rate modeled by this function E. Fish leave the lake at a rate modeled by this function L. So notice that as soon as we see the word rate and rate, we think of derivatives. So E of T and L of T are both derivatives. And what gives it away is that the units are fish per hour, where T is measured in hours since, the, since midnight, which is time zero. So part A asks, now usually this is on the calculator part of the AP, and we find that on the calculator part of the AP, there is very, very little writing. It's just a matter of setting up the correct calculus expression, like a definite integral, and using the calculator to do the rest. Okay, part A says, how many fish enter the lake over five hour period from midnight to 5 a.m.? and give your answer to the nearest whole number. So again, we have to realize here that if we want to see how many fish just enter the lake, we have to use E of t. But since E of t is the rate at which fish enter the lake, we're going to integrate E of t from the time, time interval of 0 to 5. And we would put this into our calculator, and our answer is, 153.457, but to the nearest whole number, the answer is 153 fish enter the lake from midnight to 5 a.m. Okay, now part B said, asks, what is the average number of fish that leave the lake per hour over a five-hour period from t equals zero to t equals 5 a.m.? So we have to remember that the average number of fish that leave per hour, remember, this is when we see the word average, we think of average value. So the average value of the number of fish that leave per hour would be 1 over b minus a, which is 5 minus 0, the definite integral from 0 to 5 of just L of t dt. Now remember, when we have average value, this is 1 over the number of minutes. So we have 1 over 5 minutes. And this integral is mult multiplying fish per hour by hour. So the final unit in this integral will be, well, the hours would divide through, so we would get fish per hour. So the answer to this integral, when we put it into our calculator, is 6.059, and that would be our answer. Okay, part C says, at what time t in the interval from 0 to 8 is the greatest number of fish in the lake? Justify your answer. Okay, so now we want to find the maximum number of fish in the lake. And here we would use the closed interval test. But in order to find the maximum number of fish in the lake, we need a function that will describe the number of fish at time x. So let's go to the next page and do that. So we use an, I, the idea of how to define 
a function in terms of its derivative. So the number of fish in the lake at time x is equal to the initial number of fish in the lake, which um, I don't think we were given an initial number at all. We, didn't, we weren't given that there were a certain number of fish in the lake at time zero, um, plus the definite integral from zero to t of now the derivatives. So we have to integrate um, the rate at which the fish enter the lake. Okay, this should be zero to x, I'm sorry. And minus the, the integrate the rate at the, well, actually, let me just correct this. So we could think of it this way, zero to x of the rate at which the fish enter the lake. So when we integrate the rate at which they enter the lake, we get the number of fish in the lake from zero to x and subtract the integral from zero to x, the rate at which they leave the lake, which will give us the total number of fish that left the lake from zero to x. So f of x, which would represent the, the total number of fish in the lake, would be just this integral, zero to x of e of t minus l of t dt, which was very similar to the rainwater problem we did last time, except here we don't have initial number of fish in the lake, so we don't add anything. Now, to find the maximum of f, we have to differentiate it. And the derivative of this integral by the this, this first fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, when we differentiate the integral of a rate of change, we replace the upper limit of integration with the variable. So this is just e of x minus l of x. And to get the critical values, we set that to zero. So we solve this on our calculator, and the calculator will give us that x is equal to 6.20356. And we would store that time in our calculator. Okay. Now, to find the maximum number of fish in the lake, we use the closed interval test. So we substitute zero into f of x. So this function has to be defined in your, on your calculator screen. And we get zero. We substitute eight, and the calculator would give us 80.91998. And then we would substitute the 6.20356, which we can store as a variable, let's call it B, and that gives us an answer of 135.01492. Okay, we should say this is equal to B. So the answer is the greatest number of fish in the lake is at the time, um, the time equals uh, 6.204, or you could say 6.203. I prefer this one because I don't have to think about rounding. All right, I should say that I called this T. It should really be an X because I changed my, my, um, my time into X the way I presented it because I always like to have a function of X, but X here is time. And that would conclude that piece. Okay, and then finally, part D says, is the rate of change of the number of fish in the lake increasing or decreasing 
at at the time 5 a.m. So if we look at that word, if the look at the words, the rate of change in the number of fish increasing or decreasing, we're really asking if the derivative is increasing or decreasing. And if the derivative is increasing or decreasing, we would we just, would just say, say that we would like to get the derivative of the function e at 5 and compare it to the derivative of function l at 5 because we're find to find out if the rate of change is increasing we have to differentiate these and e and l are already derivatives and when we do this on our calculator we find that the derivative of e at 5 minus the derivative of l at 5 is less than 0 so that the rate of change in the number of fish is decreasing at time 5. Okay, but again, we would have to use our calculator to find these values. And we will see on the next page that the derivative of e at 5 is negative 6.8017476, and the derivative of l at 5 was 3.921032. And since the rate of change of um, e at 5, the derivative of the rate of change of e at 5 is, is uh, smaller than the derivative of l at 5, we would say that the rate of change in the number of fish is decreasing at t equals 5. Okay, so on the next page, we'll take a look at the calculator aspect of this problem. So, I wanted, to show, I wanted to show you how we would do this on our calculator. We would go to menu, and we would do add calculator. Okay, now we're going to define our E of T and L of T just like we did in on our last one. So we say, we go to menu, actions, define. And we type in E, e of T equals 20 plus 15. And we go to our sine function, so we go to trig, the trig key here, sine, uh, okay, now we're going to put a fraction bar there, the vertical fraction bar, should go there, okay. Okay, so we have pi t. So there's a pi key here, and it's right under the e e key. So we select the pi. Okay, but actually the pi should be here. So it's pi t divided by six. And we defined the same way. So let's do that. So we we'll press enter and then we go to uh, menu, actions, define, and we define L of T equals four plus. Okay, now we have two to the power. Of point one t squared. Okay. Okay. And we press enter. Okay. Okay. So that takes care of the definition of the two functions. Now, what we'll do is 
will find the definite integral of e of t from zero to five. So we go to the key next to the book and we do definite, and we integral. do definite integrals and we do zero and to we five. Do zero to five. of e of t and don't forget the, and don't forget the dt um, on, my um, on my calculator i did control enter, uh, enter and the answer was, was 153.458 now again this rounded, this rounded off i should go back to my settings so let me do that quickly i go to my settings, I go to my settings Okay, and document settings. This should be float eight. So let's just make it float eight. Okay, and press okay. All right, now let's go back to our calculator. I believe it's on this page here. Okay, I'm going to highlight now the same integral, press enter. Oh. Wait a second, I, I lost the highlight. Press enter. press enter. And now press control, and now press control enter. enter. And notice how, and notice uh, how I have correct decimal places. five decimal places. That's, That's what the AP is looking for. Now, okay. if, I wanted, now, if I wanted to get the integral for the average value, I would have, I would have one, divided by, one five, divided by five, or I could put a, could point, put a point two, easier. just to make it easier, times, times the definite integral, so I go to the definite integral key with the next to the, well, the key with all the little boxes, and I put in zero to five of L of T dt. And I do control enter here again. And I get my 6.0590378. Okay. Now, when we want to solve for the critical values of our function, and we set e of x minus l of x to zero, so let's do that. So we're going to do menu, algebra, algebra, solve. Okay. Okay. And we're going to type in e of x. And it doesn't really matter what variable you put in there as long as we're consistent, but I'm using the variables I have my answer key, minus L of X, equals zero, comma, X, and we, put, and we do control enter again. And notice we pick the value that's in our interval. And the value doesn't appear here, but if we scroll, if we, scroll we get the 6.20356 that is in the interval from 0 to 8. Now, let's define our function f of x here. Oh, let's highlight this because I did say to highlight it. I don't know if I can highlight this. Okay, we'll try to highlight this. And and do con copy. So that's no. We can't. Oh well. Let me see if I could just do. Okay. Why don't I just do this? I'm going to type it in here. Six point two zero three five six four. And I'm going to store this control store in C. In C. Press enter. So it knows it's, so it knows it's that value. it's that now value. Let's now let's define a function f of x. So we do actions, so we do actions define, which I find to be a great aspect, aspect of the calculator. F of x, f of x equals. equals. Now, our now, f of x was um, the definite integral. So we use the definite integral key again. Zero to x. And the integrand was e of, e of, t, minus e of t minus L of t. And I 
and I don't need to open parentheses because they will be inserted automatically in the integrand with this calculator and DT. Okay, and we press uh, control enter. Oh no, not control enter. We just, wait, let me just escape this. We just press, okay, let's put the T back. We just press enter and to define it. And now we find F of zero for the closed interval test, control enter. And we know that the answer will be hopefully zero. Okay, we have F of C, but it's very important to put the value of C into your calculator and onto your page. Okay, and we do control enter. And we get 135.01492. And then we do F of eight, which is the end point of the interval, control enter. And we get 80.91998 and we proceed to answer the question. And then finally, in the last question, when we wanted to know um, if the rate of change of the number of the fish in the lake is increasing or decreasing, we have to find the derivative of E at five. So to do that, we could do, that we go to the key next to the book, we press the derivative key, which is here, Or what's easier, even easier now that, now that I think about it, because we have to put in five, so what would be easier is to go to the menu, go to calculus, hit derivative at a point. And we want the first derivative of the first derivative and the value will be five, okay? And it sets up a template for us. So we want the first derivative of of e of uh, e of t. Well, I'm going to put e of x here. It will know to replace an x for all the t's at x equals five. And I do control enter. And I get that value. And then we do the derivative. Well, actually, what I'll do is just to make sure that I save a little time, I'll highlight this, press enter, and just edit the, the function, which is L of T or L of X, and do control enter. And I get 3.921. But when we subtract the derivative of E, and the derivative of L, e, the derivative of E at 5 minus the derivative of L at 5, we get a negative value less than 0. So the rate of change in the number of fish is decreasing at time t equals 5. We should put these two numbers onto our paper. OK, that takes care of how to use the calculator for this AP question. I hope it helped you. Or I have a great day.